Howdy gamer, let's talk about the runes for Nautilus. Nautilus was like the most dominant support in season 9. Uh, coming into season 10, he's not as strong, but people are still going to be picking him as he's a pretty easy like default tank support. Um, I would say he's a step below Leona in a lot of the cases, but he's still he's still okay to pick. So the only rune, the only keystone that you're going to be going with is Aftershock. Like Summoner Spellbook's interesting to entertain, but not really useful. Um, having an extra Having a TP, a barrier, a ghost, whatnot, um, Nautilus just isn't strong enough to do that. As he needs, like he needs tank stats for free, versus champions like Orn or whatnot in the top lane who could get away with not running a defensive keystone but still functioning as a tank. So, anyways, keystone for Nautilus is going to be aftershock. Whenever you CC a target, you're going to get bonus resistances, so bonus armor and magic resist, and then you're going to deal a little bit of damage in an area around you. So this this keystone has pretty good synergy with most engaged supports with Nautilus. Um, it does as well. Whenever you hook a target, you're going to be on top of them anyways, and then you're also going to get a root off. So the damage from this is pretty much guaranteed. The cooldown has also been reduced this season, but the resistances that you get are lowered but then have a higher percentage. So you have better scaling on Aftershock, and then you have a lower cooldown in the laning phase. And what that means is that you do benefit from being able to trade more often in the laning phase. So every 20 seconds, you could look for a hook, and then it's very, very safe for you to do so. That, and then the damage you get off from it is also pretty good. So Nautilus has an advantage of um, taking hooks that aren't that dangerous in the laning phase versus a champion like Leona, who once they're on top of someone, they're basically in an all-in. Nautilus can land a hook, and it doesn't have to be an all-in. It could simply just be a damage trade. So that's pretty interesting. The second row can be kind of confusing for most people, as you want to take Font of Life, but you also want to take Shield Bash, right? Um, there's a pretty easy way to discern like when to run Font of Life versus running Shield Bash. Um, if you're playing with a with a hyper carry, you're obviously going to want Font of Life. Champions like Vayne, Varus, Jinx, Callista, um, Kog'Ma, etc., these champions have a lot of on hit. Um, they're going to benefit a ton more from Font of Life, and those champions naturally benefit more from the healing as well. With Shield Bash, you want to run this in lanes that the AD carry doesn't really need your help anyways, and then the extra damage and then the slight amount of resistances help you more. Um, but it's mostly just for the extra damage whenever you land a hook, because you hook auto W E basically. So you're going to be getting more damage just from your shield, which is kind of weird for a support but anyways the champions that you're gonna want to run this with whenever you're playing with are champions like draven quinn any of the mage supports because all they want is more damage onto the target right even if you're not killing the target the more damage you deal the better spot like you're going to be in in the laning phase because the lower the enemy is in hp the easier things are so champions like draven syndra quinn um kaisa Twitch, champions that aren't going to be interacting until it's an all-in, usually. So that's a pretty easy way, in my opinion, to discern like whether to run Shield Bash or Font of Life. Um, defaultly, though, let's just, go with, let's just go with Font of Life for anyone that's kind of newer to the game watching this video. Um, the third runes, is all, all of them are good options. Um, conditioning, give you, giving you more scaling. Second win, better if you're into ranged champions. And then Bone Plating, better if you're into melee champions. So... This one's kind of harder to discern because it's really matchup dependent. Let's say if you're against Enchanter supports or Senna or Mages, Second Wind is just by far the best as it makes it where the, the poke that they're dealing is going to be lessened. And then by you having more HP, it makes it so that you can actually like reverse the matchup with a good all-in versus having to all-in at like 200 HP or something ridiculous in which you're probably just dying yourself. With Bone Plating... Bone Plating has a way longer cooldown, so it's not as good as against Poke Champions. But it blocks a flat amount of damage, so it's better in melee matchups. So champions like Leona, um, maybe Thresh, as Thresh wants to trade a bit early, and then mostly wants to all-in whenever he trades. Um, Leona, Thresh, Blitzcrank, champions like that that have pressure onto Nautilus early, where if they spend the CC on him, if he's... Mostly if you're too far forward, that's what bone plating's for. Like it's kind of like a noob band-aid, more so than it is an actually useful rune. With conditioning, if you're playing into a lane that negates you entirely, if you run conditioning, you basically just concede the laning phase and say, Hey, I'll meet you mid-game with just just more stats for free. And then you put the ball in the enemy's court. They have to win it at that stage. And in combination with Aftershock and then also with the next rune, then you're going to be really like putting the enemy on a timer. And if they're not beating you significantly, then they're not really winning. So champions like Morgana 
Well, that's going to be a common counter pick if you're picking Nautilus in solo queue. Um, champions like Morgana, if they're picking that in the support role, then you're saying, that's fine. I don't have to participate in this laning phase. And then once 10, minute, 10 minutes comes around, you're just going to have more armor and magic resist. And then you're also going to have a percentage of armor and magic resist. So every single item that Nautilus wants to build, Zeke's, Locket, etc., is going to be giving you more stats. So it's a pretty good rune. Defaultly, though, let's go with the second one. Um, in the next next tree, your good options are either Overgrowth or Unflinching. With Nautilus, having Tenacity or Slow Resist isn't that important. Once you're on top of someone, you're there, right? It's not so important that you really get out. So I'm going to recommend Overgrowth. What Overgrowth does is whenever you're near minions or monsters, but mostly just minions that die, you're going to be getting permanent health increase. And then once you absorb 120, then it's going to give you a percentage of max health increase. So what this ended up giving you is about a ruby crystal for free. And as support, that is so absolutely strong that you just get basically 400 gold worth of HP for free. So it just makes you that much more durable. And again, with mid game, like if you put the enemy, even if you are in a matchup that you can't win in the laning phase, it's fine because come mid game, you're still going to be strong. And a rune like this helps you scale up until then. With Revitalize, it's not that good as you don't have any heals in your kit. There's no healing on Relic Shield anymore. And the extra shielding just doesn't matter. It doesn't matter at all. You're spending your shield at the start of a fight, not at the end. So having it be better whenever you're lower doesn't matter. And that's that. Unflinching, after you cast a Summoner spell, um, you gain Tenacity and Slow Resist. This isn't that important either as once you land a hook, you're already on top of the enemy. Um, so once you spend your ignite, it's not so important that you can stay on top of the enemy because you spend your hook and then your ult and that's about it. And then it's up to your allies to stay on top of the enemy. Secondary runes, I'm going to go with Hextech Flash. Whenever your flash is on cooldown, you get access to Hextech Flash. And what Hextech Flash does is it lets you channel in place. And then it gives you like about half the range of a flash. But then what this does is it lets you still have pressure in the laning phase with your flash being down. So let's say you flash killed them once, you can stand in the bush bot lane and then channel Hextech Flash and then be in range for a hook. So you can surprise the enemy from the fog of war by standing in bushes and using this. Um, it also has some general usefulness by being able to be able to cast over walls, but like that's that's not really the case. It's mostly just to um, win more against enemies that you're already beating in the laning phase or check if they're really respecting like the punish because if they're not like at a respectful range when you could hex tech flash out of a bush then you can catch them out it's a really really solid solo queue rune especially with nautilus's role of just catch the enemy out with a hook next rune is going to be biscuits um, biscuit delivery every two minutes you're going to get a biscuit and then what the biscuit does is it restores 10 percent of your missing health and then also gives you increased mana so in all ends, if it's going to the wire, like down to 100 health and you use this, you're going to be getting the most value out of it. So it helps in all ends. If you've exhausted your mana through taking a lot of trades in lane, it helps you just be at a better HP mana value. And then if you don't end up using them in the laning phase, you can also sell them. So it can offset the cost of control wards early. And then you're also going to get the increased mana from the biscuits. And Nautilus is pretty mana hungry. If you get two rotations of the hook E off in a team fight, you're probably going to be out of mana. So it's nice to have this to kind of offset his mana cost. And then for adaptive runes, it's going to be attack speed, armor, magic resist. This is pretty standard for most tank supports. He doesn't need the CDR. And then you also don't need the double adaptive force as the AP offered doesn't matter. Um, it just It's not going to make or break a fight or like any lane. Uh, but the attack speed helps you with um, Trades in lane, it helps you with clearing wards, it helps you with pushing the lane, it helps you with hitting towers, it helps you with hitting objectives. It has way more use as support versus the little bit more AP you would get from both of these. And then armor and magic resist gives you dual resistances at level 1 in the lane. And it's so important to be like as durable as possible because you have to scale up as any melee support. You have to get at least to level 6 before you can really start being like significantly durable. And having the extra armor and magic resist, regardless of the lane you're playing into in the bot lane, you're probably going to be taking both types of damage. So it's important to run those. If you're playing into, let's say, Caitlyn Center or something, sure, just take double armor. You don't need the magic resist in a lane like that. But defaultly, this, this is what I would recommend. Um, there's not really much variation for the Nautilus rune page. So if you have any questions, 
leave them in the comments. I reply to all of them. And if this video did help you, leaving a like helps me. So be nice if you did that, wouldn't it? It'd be not. It'd be cool. Anyways, twitch.tv slash sorry Nelson. If you want to see some support gameplay come start of season 10. Um, you know what? There's a the secondaries is kind of in secondaries are like kind of worth mentioning. Whatever. Domination, cheap shot, relentless hunter. Um, this is kind of interesting in solo queue as with Mobis, you can kind of just leave lane if you're winning that hard and then kind of just auto win the the game in solo queue as nobody pays respect to the fog of war. And then you just show up in mid and top lane and gank both of them and then take Rift Herald, etc. And then with Cheap Shot, it's just going to give you more damage whenever you land anything. So that's kind of interesting. It's more for like roaming and whatnot. Um, with Precision, you have the option of Presence of Mind and Tenacity. This isn't so useful on Nautilus. It's more useful on champions um, that actually like Tenacity. Nautilus doesn't give a shit about Tenacity. You're basically just eating every ability and hoping that you survive and if you die or survive you're getting value regardless so that's not so useful but with cheap shot or lowest hunter you can make use of this room page if you're just basically if you're just at a higher skill level than the opponent and you're moving around the map way earlier than the enemy but it's it's definitely a cheese way to play nautilus versus the standard so that's that i hope this video helped See you later. Bye-bye. See ya. That's all I got. I play Nautilus every now and then. I, I fell in love with him way back in the day, but we've, we just haven't been talking lately. But he's a nice guy.